President Biden's mishandling of classified documents was not criminal. He will not be indicted, according to the special counsel investigating the classified documents found in his home and office. But it does raise serious questions because he took documents home on Afghanistan, and that's one of the many reasons I wanted to talk to Leon Panetta, the former CIA director and former Secretary of Defense in the Obama administration, former White House Chief of Staff for President Clinton, tried to deal with special counsel and special prosecutor, a different law, but uh, same result, a White House under siege when you were Chief of Staff. Secretary Panetta, good to see you. This, good to be with you. Well, this her report finds that President Biden, quote, willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency, something the president denied last night, including to his ghostwriter, who never had a security clearance. Uh, you've dealt with a lot of classified documents. This was These were documents on Afghanistan. And we know, and I think uh, you might have some insights into this, that he says very clearly uh, that he was uh, you know, almost alone in the administration where he was pushing back against President Obama's um, policy on Afghanistan. And that actually led, in you know, previous years, to a book from Bob Gates, the former defense secretary, criticizing Joe Biden on Afghanistan policy. Can you help us with this? Well, uh, there's no question that uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, obviously opposed uh, providing additional forces uh, in Afghanistan and uh, was always concerned about the direction of that war. And uh, obviously, some of these notes uh, played into uh, his ability to kind of uh, be able to document uh, his position at that time. Uh, but, you know, in, in the end, I think the most important thing here is that uh, he was not charged uh, by the uh, Justice Department. Uh, and even though some of the uh, comments that were used are not helpful, uh, I think the most important thing right now for the president and the White House is to move on. You're dealing with too much in the country right now, uh, dealing with the Congress, dealing with foreign affairs issues. You got to continue to focus on what's important to this country. And that, that I think, is what the White House and, and the and the president ought to be focusing on. Were you aware at the time, as he apparently was thinking about even quitting over this issue, quitting as vice president of the United States? I I was not aware of that, uh, you know, because, uh, look, the uh, president was very loyal to uh, President Obama. Uh, we sat in a lot of national security meetings. Uh, the vice president at that time was always pretty clear about his views. Um, but I also felt that he was very loyal to the president and to whatever decisions the president made. I want to talk to you about the Middle East. Uh, for the first time, President Biden used some very tough words to criticize Israel's response, and it was particularly aimed at Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, can you, you know, talk to me about that, about the rift that you're now seeing, we're seeing, it certainly was apparent with Secretary Blinken on his last trip, where he emphasized very different priorities, the hostages, limiting the war, limiting civilian casualties, not speaking to getting and destroying Hamas. And there's, there are credible reports, and from my reporting, that a number of the generals are very concerned that that goal is not even achievable and that um, it's in direct conflict with getting the hostages out safely. Well, for, for those of us who uh, dealt with uh, Netanyahu, uh, this is, uh, he's pretty much following the script that he always follows, which is to, to be tough, to be obstinate, to uh, kind of make clear that he's in charge. Uh, but at the same time, uh, very frankly, he knows that politically in Israel, he cannot just stand back and not deal with the hostage issue. Uh, there's tremendous pressure on him to focus on the hostage, hostage issue. And the only way he's going to get there is by ultimately cutting a deal here that provides for some kind of ceasefire, that provides for the return of the hostages, probably exchange of prisoners, and that provides for humanitarian aid going in. Uh, I, I know he's posturing right now. I know he's uh, saying the things that want that uh, want to make him look tough uh, to his people and to the world. But the bottom line is that he has nowhere to go, but ultimately agreeing to some kind of deal that relates to the hostages. 
in, in terms of the relationship with Israel, though, there's, he's also do, doing something that is very, that's not posturing, because he is pushing forward into Rafah, where people have been, displaced people have been um, jammed together in that southern part, right near the crossing to Egypt, and pushing forward with airstrikes overnight, and now with plans, we are told, to actually go in and, and have a ground offensive there something the U.S. is against. Yeah, it's, uh, it's again, I think, uh, the kind of decisions uh, that he makes that uh, oftentimes uh, really undermine, frankly, uh, his case to the world for what he's trying to do. Uh, the focus here is on destroying the leadership of Hamas, period. Uh, he's not going to destroy all of Hamas. Uh, he's not going to achieve some kind of, of huge victory in which uh, uh, all of Hamas will suddenly go away. That's just not going to happen. This is about going after the leadership of Hamas. And that's going to take a long time. And it's going to take, frankly, some targeted operations. It isn't going to take uh, the operations where you just uh, continue to blow up towns in Gaza. Uh, ultimately, he's got to get to that point, because the reality is that the leadership of Hamas may not just be in the tunnels in Gaza, they may be spread all over the Middle East, and he is going to have to take years to go after that kind of leadership. So at some point, the reality of what we're dealing with is going to come home to roost for Netanyahu. And what are the implications for the United States and for this administration? I think the United States, uh, and I think what Secretary Blinken did is exactly the right thing, which is to continue to push diplomatically, uh, working with our allies in the region, uh, working with our moderate a Arab uh, allies, uh, trying to be able to put additional pressure uh, on Netanyahu, uh, because, look, right now there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, the United States is conducting attacks against uh, Houthis and others uh, because of uh, their attacks on, on our people. Uh, that's continuing. It's likely to continue. Uh, we're now trying to reach some kind of deal that will provide a ceasefire. Uh, and ultimately, I think that's got to happen. We've got to deal with the Palestinian issue and try to develop future leadership that can uh, be able to provide some kind of future for the Palestinian people. And then uh, lastly, uh, we have got to be able to make sure that the people who are there uh, and are dealing with these challenges ultimately understand that we have to develop a long-term peaceful solution, working with our Arab allies and trying to get Saudi Arabia as part of the Abraham Accords so that ultimately there is hope for some kind of future peace in the Middle East. And let me just briefly ask you about Ukraine. Uh, it's now possibly coming back in through the Senate. The House has still said it's against the Ukraine aid. Um, what are the implications for the people of Ukraine? They're running out of ammunition. They're, they don't have enough air defenses. They don't have weapons that only the United States can provide. Andrea, I, I, I've really been concerned about uh, the message that the United States is sending to the world by the failure to provide uh, aid to Ukraine, uh, aid to Israel, aid to Taiwan, uh, and the fact that uh, even though there was an effort to achieve a border uh, deal uh, relating to our border, uh, that, that uh, the Republicans suddenly backed away from that because of, of, of Donald Trump. Uh, the failure to enact this package and get it done is undermining United States leadership in the world. Our, our most important effort has to be not just to provide that leadership, but to work with our allies to make sure that we are protecting democracies in the world. This is a long-term battle. And if we continue to just delay and kick the can down the road 
and not make the decisions that have to be made, we are sending a message of weakness to the world. Both Republicans and Democrats need to know that.